Hi, Math 215 students. In this last video for section 2.1, we're going to talk about uh, some more operations, in particular powers and transposes of matrices. And uh, we'll dive into that. We're going to be talking about matrix powers and matrix transposes. Our list of outcomes is here. We'll uh, show this list at the end of the video. But what we're after is to finally uh, finish answering this last question we've looked at uh, over the course of these videos. We have asked whether there are any other operations on matrices that we should learn as we're learning our, about our arithmetic operations. Um, and it turns out that, yes, these uh, powers and transposes will be helpful to us in the future. So to dive right into the, uh, the operations, the first one is taking a power of a matrix which sounds very much like uh, what you do when you take a power of a number. If k is a positive integer, what we'll do is take k copies of the matrix A and multiply them. Now, we're multiplying using matrix multiplication, but uh, we know what that means. Um, and in particular, we know that you have to be careful. You can't always multiply any two matrices you wish. So in order for this to make sense, we need the number of columns of A to be the same as the number of rows of A in order for that multiplication to make sense. And that means that A has to have the same number of rows and columns. In other words, it has to be a square matrix. On the other hand, if you have a square matrix, like one of these, uh, you can raise it to any positive number power you like. So for instance, if I were to take this matrix here and square it, what that means is multiplying it by itself and uh, you might want to pause the video if you like and, and calculate this yourself. But what we end up with here is another 3x3 three three matrix whose entries are as shown here. And in particular, you'll notice that there's some interesting stuff going on. Um, when you're squaring real numbers, you always get a positive answer. When we square this matrix, we actually still end up with some negative numbers there. So it's not quite the same thing as squaring um, the that you're used to, it is the same in that we do take two copies of the matrix and multiply them together. All right, now cubing a matrix means just taking three copies of that matrix and multiplying those together. If you like, we can multiply the first two of these together followed by the third, or because we said that matrix multiplication is associative, if you like, you could group these latter two together and then multiply on the left by that, that uh, first matrix. We're going to just go ahead and multiply the first two together. Multiplying those two gives us 4101. And when we multiply the last matrix onto the result, we end up with negative 8, negative 3, 0, 1. Okay. Now, uh, one more example just to hammer home some points. Let's take the sixth power of this matrix, which as we know means taking six copies of that matrix and multiplying them all together. Now, we just mentioned that matrix multiplication is associative, so I can put grouping parentheses however I want around these matrices, and I'm going to choose to group them in twos. Uh, we'll multiply, and we'll get the same computation in each set of parentheses. Uh, namely, two copies of this multiplied together make the matrix 1, 1, 1, 2. So these six matrices turn into three copies of that matrix. And when we multiply the first two, we get 2, 3, 3, 5, and when we multiply these last two matrices, we're going to end up with 5, 8, 8, 13. And that is the answer. This is the sixth power of the matrix 0, 1, 1, 1. Now, that would be the end of the story unless you happen to recognize these numbers, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. If you do, uh, great. You might be interested to see what happens if you take other powers of this matrix. If you don't, no worries, it won't be important for us. Let's actually move on to another quick question. Can you simplify the quantity a plus b squared when a and b are n by n matrices? Now, the reason this, this is a question is because in your earlier algebra classes with real numbers, it was always the case that x plus y quantity squared could be written as x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Can you say something similar for the sum of two matrices squared? And we'll find the answer by just trying it out. Let's square a plus b, 
That means to multiply a plus b times itself. And then we'll use our distributive property to handle things from here. We know that if you have a quantity multiplied after a sum, I can take the quantity and distribute it onto each of the original terms in that uh, first set of parentheses. So this will be equal to a times a plus b plus b times a plus b. And then we'll use the distributive property again to multiply the a and the b on the left in each of those sets of parentheses. It is important to not change the order that things happen in here. So we'll keep the, uh, the b on the left of the a in that second set of parentheses. And we'll get the right hand side shown here. Now, just like you saw there, we're going to start off with a times a, which we could write as a squared. The last term, bb, can be written as b squared. Now, the inner terms, a, b, and b, a, we, uh, we know may not be the same. That was one of our warnings for matrix multiplication. If you multiply two matrices in a different order, they may not be the same thing. And so we're not going to be able to combine these in the same way that we could combined uh, to form 2xy in with real numbers. The most we can do is uh, simplify it this far, and that's it when it comes to matrix multiplication. Okay? All right, now here's one exercise. This one will also kind of draw on your previous uh, algebra experience. You probably saw equations like this, uh, x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. It's a quadratic equation. And this exercise asks you to show that this 2 by 2 matrix actually is a solution to this equation. Now, to make this work for matrices, I've actually uh, replaced 2 by 2 times the identity matrix. And the 0 in this equation actually stands for the 0 matrix. Now, because x is 2 by 2, I know that x squared will be 2 by 2. 3 times x will be 2 by 2. So the identity matrix and the 0 matrix we're going to assume that those are also 2 by 2 matrices. So let's go ahead and verify this by actually plugging in x for the left-hand side. We'll take x times itself, for x squared, 3 times x, and then 2 times the identity matrix. So if you like, go ahead and uh, pause the video and calculate these. But when we do simplify this, the first two matrices turn out to be 13, 18, negative 6, negative 8. The scalar multiplication in this middle term gives us 15, 18, negative 6, negative 6. And then 2 times the identity matrix gives us the last matrix there. Now, when we subtract and add, you'll see that the, uh, the terms, if I take the first matrix term, subtract the second matrix term, and add the third matrix term, we end up with 0 in each of those positions. And so, yes, indeed, when x is equal to that 2 by 2, matrix x squared minus 3x plus 2i is equal to 0. Okay, well let's uh, end our discussion of matrix powers and talk about our next operation, the transpose of a matrix. Now, unlike powers, you can take the transpose of any uh, matrix with any dimensions. So I can certainly take the transpose of these matrices. Uh, the first one is not a square matrix, so I couldn't take a power of it, but I can definitely take a transpose. Now, we write the transpose as A with the superscript of T. The T stands for transpose. And to form it, what we're going to do is note that the answer is supposed to have dimensions that are the reverse of the dimensions of A. So if A was M by N, that means that A has M rows and N columns. And the opposite will be true for A transpose. It's supposed to have N rows and M columns. Now what we'll do to get the entries is we will write the rows of A in order as the columns of A transpose. So in this first example, I'm going to take negative 3, 2, 5, 1, which is the first row of our matrix, and I'll write that as the column, the first column of A transpose. And 0, negative 4, 6, 7 was the second row. That becomes the second column when I take the transpose of the matrix. Okay, so this result on the right is the transpose of the, uh, of the original matrix. Now, in the second example, if I were to take the transpose of this 3 by 3 matrix, the result will also be 3 by 3, but the rows of the first matrix turn into the columns of the second matrix. Okay, 
Now, if you like, uh, you can think of the transpose in this way, the ij entry, no matter what i and j are, the ij entry of the first matrix becomes the ji entry of the second matrix. So if I were to look at, for instance, the 2, 3 entry of the first matrix, here I see a 6 in the 2, 3 spot. I'm going to look at the 3, 2 spot in the transpose, and it turns out that uh, the entries are the same. The 2, 3 entry here was 6. The 3, 2 entry here is 6. Okay? Now, one uh, third way of thinking about transposes is to look at the main diagonal of your matrix. So I've drawn a line to indicate the main diagonal of the first matrix and uh, here in the second matrix. When I take the transpose, I can imagine this as being a rotation about that main diagonal or a reflection. So I'm going to imagine that that main diagonal stays fixed in place. Things that are to the left, uh, things that are below an entry are going to swing up and lie to the right. It's like they rotated over that line to get there. Things that are to the right of an entry in the original matrix swing down to form the column below that entry in the transpose. Now with the square matrix, it's even easier to see what's happening. Uh, Things that are across from each other, across that diagonal line, trade places. So the 0 and 4 will trade places, the 1 and 0 trade places, the 0 and 2 trade places. And the things that are on the main diagonal always stay in their same uh, same positions. Okay, so whether you uh, like this pictorial version of thinking of transpose, or whether you think of it more in terms of IJ entries and JI entries, we have a few different ways of thinking about the transpose of a matrix. We're going to see a little bit later why the transpose is a useful operation, but for right now, we're, we'll just talk about some properties of the transpose. And in particular, what happens if you take the transpose of a transpose? So what happens if you were to take a transpose, uh, find your answer, and then take the transpose of that? So if I were to take the transpose of this 3x3 three three matrix, what would happen? Well, in this particular example, we would rotate again across that uh, main diagonal, and that would switch the 0 and 4, the 1 and 0, the 0 and 2, and I'd actually go back to a matrix that, that looks like the matrix on the left if I were to erase the transpose symbol. And in general, uh, that unsurprising thing is what always happens. If you take the transpose of A transpose, you'll get back your original matrix A. Okay. Now here is a list of properties of transposes. If you like, go ahead, pause the video, and jot down what you think should happen on the right-hand side of each of these uh, rules. Our next rule talks about the transpose of a sum of matrices. So if A and B have the same dimensions, we're adding them together and then taking the transpose. I'll illustrate that here with uh, one by four matrices. I add them together, I take the transpose, and here sits my four by one answer. You can imagine that if we were to take the transpose first, though, if I were to take A017 transpose, that gives me that uh, vector, the column matrix, uh, and if taking the transpose first and then doing the addition gives me the same answer. I end up with the same matrix as my final solution. And so even though the middles were different, if, uh, the two quantities, a plus B transpose and A transpose plus B transpose end up giving me the same result. And so you can write that as a rule. It turns out that transposes, in effect, distribute over sums. Next, if you have scalar multiplication in a transpose, you might wonder how they interact with each other. And, uh, well, here's an example. We've got scalar multiplication happening inside of a transpose. If I do that scalar multiplication, followed by taking the transpose, I'll get one result. And if I were to switch the order of those, if I were to take the transpose first and then do the scalar multiplication, you'll see that those two processes are really kind of independent from each other. If you do them in either order, you'll end up with the same result. All right, so we would write that as the quantity RA transpose. That's equal to R times the transpose of A. Finally, we're going to talk about 
matrix multiplication and the transpose. If I have a times b and I take the transpose of the result, can I write that in a different way for the right-hand side of the equation? And here's our example that we will illustrate with. I have a times b, I multiply this together and then take the transpose at the end and I get a certain result. Now, if I wanted to, I might uh, think about, could I move the transpose on to a and b separately? And um, could the rule look like this? Now, that's a valid question, but let's take a look at this particular example. Uh, we know that when you do matrix multiplication, the number of columns in the first matrix has to equal the number of rows in the second matrix. And here, I started with the 3 by 2 matrix. A transpose would end up being 2 by 3. B started off as a 2 by 4 matrix. B transpose would be a 4 by 2 matrix. And if you were to look at that, you'll see that I actually can't do this multiplication. Uh, the 3 and the 4 don't match up like they're supposed to, and so it's not possible to multiply A transpose by B transpose in that way. So this rule is not true, but um, if you were to take a look at these numbers, you might notice that actually we're supposed to end up with a 4 by 3 matrix as our answer, and there is a 4 here and a 3 here. It's just that they're not in the right order. And actually, the 2 and the 2, uh, they do match up, except that they're not the right numbers matching up. Uh, in order to make this work for matrix multiplication, I would kind of need the 4 by 2 to show up on the left of the 2 by 3. Now, I can make that happen if I were to take the green matrix, the second matrix, put that transpose on the left of the orange matrix transpose, so that I do end up with a um, 4 by 2 times a 2 by 3. The dimensions work out to give me the 4 by 3 I was hoping for, and actually if you do that multiplication, you'll see that we do end up in the same final uh, destination. So a plus b trans a times b transpose gives me the same thing as b transpose a transpose. The uh, operation, the transpose operation can distribute onto the pieces, but it's important to make sure that you switch the order of the multiplication when you do that. Now to see why this is actually the same, it's not just a coincidence. Um, if we were to take a look at that 86, for instance, in the top left corner, you'll see that the 86 started off in the top left corner. I got that by taking 6 and 4, pairing them up with 9 and 8, and 54 plus 32 is what created 86. Now in this matrix down here, the 86 came from taking 9 and 8 times 6 and 4, pairing those up. 9 times 6, 8 times 4 gives us 54 plus 32 again. And you'll see that actually it's the same numbers, 9 and 6, 8 and 4, um, 6 and 9, 4 and 8. We've got the same numbers in, in maybe different orders there but uh, you actually end up going across a row in a transpose is the same as going down a column in the first matrix, and so we end up with the same numbers uh, doing it uh, either way. Okay, now in words, what we could say for that last rule is the transpose of a product of matrices equals the product of their transposes in the reverse order. Okay, so AB transpose is equal to B transpose, A transpose, and that's actually going to be true for more than just um, two matrices. We'll wrap up here by taking a transpose of a larger product, uh, the product of four different matrices, and we'll see that this uh, later version of the, of the rule is also true. Now to illustrate that, I'm going to think of this multiplication as happening, um, I'm going to think about what would happen if I imagine A times B times C is just a single matrix, and then I've got D, and then I'm taking the transpose of the result? Now, you're thinking of that as a single matrix, and D is a single matrix. We know that when you take the transpose of that product, you're going to get the product of the transposes, but in the reverse order. So this line would equal D transpose times the quantity 
ABC transpose. All right, now thinking in that second set of parentheses of AB as a single matrix and C as another matrix, I can distribute the transpose again, but the C is going to happen before the AB. And then finally, AB transpose we know is equal to B transpose A. And so when I think about applying that transpose rule again and again and again, we'll end up seeing the same matrices as before, but they're going to appear in the reverse order. D transpose, C transpose, B transpose, A transpose. So what's true for two matrices is actually true for any number. You just want to end up distributing the transpose, but writing the matrices in the uh, opposite order. And so um, this will work for any number of, of matrices that are multiplying together. With that, we'll wrap up the video. Uh, we have talked in these last uh, four videos about doing addition, subtraction, multiplication. We've answered a couple of, of questions related to those and learned about some more operations. And so to wrap up, here's that list of outcomes again. Please make sure that you can do the things that are listed here. If you have any questions, let me know. See you in the next video.